Anyway, okay. Um, handguns in Canada for self-defense. I've made this video. It was one of my kickoff kind of videos for uh, my so-called political rants and stuff. One of the one of the videos. It was a video that I had a hard time making because I thought it would be, you know, I didn't know how people were going to take it. And it's been up there, and it's, you know, below it there's all kinds of comments and stuff like that. And uh, people are still, you know, interesting. And what I what it is is I'm a Canadian asking for the right to carry a firearm for self-defense with training, of course, and, and a background check. Uh, and obviously proficiency, proficiency, knowing what you're doing training. And uh, can't speak today. i got to turn this thing. It's just like tripping my tongue, you know what I mean? Uh, looks like a walrus. You know. But anyway, um, so I get comments from time to time of people that I once felt like, uh, you know, and, and would have agreed with them wholeheartedly, and then now it's like, well, I don't see it that way anymore. And, you know, people can change their opinions. It doesn't make them hypocrites if they get different information and change their opinions. Years ago, I would not have ever agreed with the right to carry until I started looking into it, and then I'm like, uh, makes a great idea. So uh, one of the arguments um, a user posted was that, you know, uh, and it usually comes down to what I call the brainwashing answer, where you're Canadian, you're not an American, we don't need those here, uh, kind of answers. And you've seen it with Dalton McGinty with our firearms culture is different than that of the States. It is different in a lot of ways. Yes, Americans do buy firearms for self-defense quite regularly. Canadians typically don't. Why? Because, well, we don't. We don't admit that if we do or, or we don't because it's not legal to have a firearm really for self-defense. Yes, okay, yes, you can, under extreme circumstan circumstances by the RCMP, you can use a firearm in self-defense. However, there's almost absolutely no way you won't be charged. Uh, Ian Thompson case is a perfect example. Uh, Lawrence Manzer, the... Uh, jeweler in Toronto, I mean, and a whole host of ever, other people that have used firearms to defend themselves and get charged later. A lot of times the charges will get dropped, but how much is the court fees to get proven innocent, you know what I mean? So, Canadians may not openly say if they're buying guns for self-defense. Most of us don't. I agree with that, because we don't think of it that way. Now, the argument was this. Um, Canadians don't need it because the statistical chance of you ever being murdered by somebody with a gun, okay, never mind murdered, period, the gun is so low that you don't have to worry about it well there's a difference between worried and prepared worried about it no i am not i live in a small town where everybody's pretty much related 300 people four last names that type of thing uh, i'm not worried about anybody here but it does not mean it can't happen here and you hear it time and time again on the news never thought that could happen here uh Guy walked into a nursery the other day with a gun. He, I, I believe he offed himself in a dispute. He wasn't going in there to kill the kids. But he walked in there with a gun. Okay, and this was in Gatineau or Montreal. I think it was in Gatineau, Quebec. Walks in and apparently had a splat with, uh, I guess, you know, the way I understand it. I don't know all the details, so I, I might be off the rocker here. But guy ended up dead. Nobody else injured. So, uh, from what I understand, caught the story on the CBC. So this guy basically... Uh, basically a lover's quarrel public suicide you know but the fact that he walked into a nursery where there was basic babies and, and preschool whatever um well what if he was walking in there to uh blast those kids like adam lanza did thank god the guy was just suicidal you know what i'm saying because nobody there was armed so this might th this is what i'm talking about statistically that, that it's the lowest thing you're, you know, the last thing you need to be worried about is getting murdered by a firearm, but getting murdered, period. This is a different story. And you can be murdered by anything. Now, this guy's other argument was that uh, even if somebody was wishing to do me harm, um, you know, it's, it, you know, it doesn't give me the right to, or, you know, I, I don't, I would, couldn't justify killing them, you know. Well, I'm going to take this apart in a couple of different ways. Number one, although this is a BB gun, okay. If I were pointing that at you, you would probably run from it. Why? Because you wouldn't want to get shot. You wouldn't want to die. So just showing the firearm is probably enough to scare you straight. Meaning, nobody dies, nobody goes to prison and raises taxes. And, you you know, it changes things. Now, however, if you're willing to make that commitment to actually hurt somebody, no, you won't. So if you're not willing to carry one of these in self-defense, fair enough. If you're not willing to take the training to learn how to use it in self-defense, fair enough. 
And if you cannot physically pass the course or psychiatric evaluation to have a firearm for self-defense, no, you shouldn't have one. That said, the people who can should be allowed. So just because you don't want it doesn't mean everybody else shouldn't have that right. Self-defense is a natural born right. It's, it's, there's no law that's going to... If somebody throws a punch at you, find a place for my gun. If somebody throws a punch at you, you believe in self-defense. You want to know why? You put your hands up so you don't get hit. Now, it's not a very good self-defense because, and, you know, not only do they hit you, but you hit yourself. That's a form of self-defense. Now, you can, like one guy said, oh, I'll just take a martial art. Sure, but what if the guy's at 10, 20 feet away with a gun? A knife ain't going to help me. Martial arts ain't going to help me. I need something to close that distance. I need another gun. It's not a guarantee that it will save your life, but if these things weren't effective for self-defense, police officers would not carry them. And a lot of people get onto the, yeah, but police officers got training, they got background checks. And, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but most people could easily, easily pass the police officer training uh, with a firearm for self-defense. And the Americans have pretty much done all the homework for us. Just because it's American doesn't mean Canadians are trying to be American. What it says is Canadians are trying to be safe. One of the largest categories of firearms owners out there right now is women. In, this, in the States, women are buying guns. They're the, the largest, you know, men probably still buy more guns. But the category of women uh, is, is, is coming up. Most of them get into recreational shooting, but 90% of them are probably buying guns because they realize that the police just cannot get there in time. You know, uh, <coughs> you have all kinds of police officers in the States saying, you know what? Uh, never mind the police chiefs because they're bureaucrats, okay? And same with the RCMP here, they're bureaucrats. And they're appointed, meaning they have to say whatever the person who put them in power tells them to say. But the police officers say pretty much the same thing. We can't be everywhere. You're going to have to hold them off until we get there. And all you have to do is research armed citizens. YouTube armed citizens, you'll get the idea really quickly how these things really change the tides. And I'm not talking about, you know... Ta tactical GI Joes out there taking out the bad guy. I'm talking about single moms. I'm talking about grannies. Uh, five guys run into a store and, and on the video footage. It's just 61 year old lady with a 44 Magnum jumps over the counter. When five guys with guns come in to rob her, she, she's like on them like a pit bull on a pork chop, chasing them out the door. It's like Larry Curly Moan and his two cousins boom, 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 into the door. And it was nobody died. That's the, that's the great part. Often just showing the gun is enough to scare people straight. But if that's not enough, you have to be able to... Now, if you don't have it in you to defend yourself, going by statistical chance, you have to understand that every statistic is a body. It is a person that got killed when we're talking about these type of crime statistics. Now, problem is, is people just focus on how many people die by guns. No, look at the murder rate in total. Now, in Canada, it's around 600, 550 to 600 every year give or take a few. Um, the thing is this. It doesn't matter what somebody is willing to kill. You know, if they have a knife and you have a gun, so, oh, well, he has a knife here, I'll put my gun down and go get a knife. No, you need that superiority. It doesn't mean you actually have to shoot. It means that if you have to, you can. But often, most people don't want to get shot. So it don't matter if they're sane or insane, unless they're really beyond, uh, you know, reproach. You're just not going, they're not going to challenge this authority. And in fact, you may find this hard to believe, but the statistical data shows that when the bad guy has a gun, he, he's less likely to shoot you. Why? Give me your money. He, you know, he does not feel threatened by you at all. Where if he has a knife or something, statistically speaking, he'll take your money and gash you a few times so you don't follow him. But this, he knows you're not going to follow him. <laughs> it is what it is. I know, I know it sounds completely irrational, but you're actually safer if the bad guy has a gun. But however, it doesn't mean they're not going to do something bad. And what if you come up against a meth head? You know, like that uh, Eugene guy there that chewed off the other guy's face in Florida. That took five shots to put that guy down. He must have been really hungry. But that's that's the thing. You're not going to reason with that person. And this is what I hear sometimes in some of my comments. Well, you could reason with a person. You, it's going to happen so fast. This is about all you're going to have time for. That's about all you're going to have time for. You know, recognizing it. Uh, okay, sir, stop, sir, stop, sir, stop, stop, stop. You know, you're, you're going to have to be really quick. You know, but sir, stop, sir, stop, sir, stop. They're still coming. Bang. You know, 
training to be worked out, but that's just kind of an idea of what I'm talking about is that um, they're not going to be able to, you're, you're not going to be able to talk this person down. If they're convinced on beating the crap out of you, uh, you know, all you have to do is see how people get assaulted in real time from video footage and you get it that, okay, sometimes they knock you down as they're going through your stuff. That's your opportunity to, you know, that's the nice thing about concealed carry. They don't know if you have it or not. And after a few examples are made, people get arrested, people get shot, people, whatever the crime rates typically go down by 30 to 40%. So if that's what happens in the state, you can imagine what would happen in Canada, there would be no crime rate. <laughs> I mean, we're pretty well behaved as, as far as we, as, you know, as far as Canadians go, but when you statistically work it out, the crime rate is actually higher in some categories here in Canada than it is in the States when you give the population per 100,000 in, into consideration. We're actually half of that of Britain and double that of uh, the United States So, <laughs> in violent crime. So in the murder rate, yeah, we're still, they still have about 20 times the murder rate. But if you just factor out the gang-related stuff, they're much lower. So, the you know, um, lovers quarrels like this guy the other day in, in Gatineau. But again, right there, the guy walked in. Uh, I don't know if he had a rifle or a handgun or whatever, but he shot himself, okay, in a nursery or preschool or whatever. Okay, again, what if this guy went in there to kill those kids? They would all be dead. And exactly what law could have been put in to prevent this? Nothing. <laughs> you know, absolutely nothing. Laws are reactionary, you know. Whenever somebody attacks you, it doesn't matter the likelihood of attacking you. It's not about living in fear. This is, this is one of the things... I, 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 you know, tell people it's not about living, it's being prepared because you will have to deal with your attacker. You will be the first responder to your attacker, not the police. Um, you know, police are starting to get it that people need to be able to take care of themselves. It doesn't give more risk to the police. Why? Because the people they have to worry about, they already have the guns, they already have the knives, they already, they're already nuts. Um, you know, and if guns were not effective, uh, at uh, lowering crime or defending people, police wouldn't carry them. And a lot of people say, well, we trust the police because they have their training. Sure. The only difference between a civilian and a police officer is the badge, the paycheck, the uniform, the gun, and that's it. Everything else is just training and background check. Now, what kind of training program? Well, again, we can use a lot of stuff in the States, and most people training people in the States how to defend themselves with firearm are law enforcement and military, or ex-law enforcement or military, because they know what works. And... More often than not, when the person is armed, they can usually defend themselves. And it's the women, the little old ladies, the kids. You know, I mean, trust me, lots of people have defended themselves 2.5 to 3 million times a year. You're 84% more likely to defend yourself with a firearm than you are to do something bad with it. The numbers are there. It doesn't matter if you believe them or have an emotional argument. The numbers are there. The proof is, if you're self-reliant and have the training, I mean, we're talking little old ladies. We're not talking, you know, Arnold Schwarzenegger with his meat hand cannon. The 9mm hand cannon, it's a bigger 9mm, get down, you know, but anyway, you get the idea, so anyway, tell me what you guys think. I want them to make that my picture, they never do though. Anyway, okay, um, handguns in Canada for self-defense, I've made this video, it was one of my kickoff kind of videos for uh, my so-called political rants and stuff, one of, the, one of the videos, it was a video that I had a hard time making because I thought it would be... You know, I didn't know how people were going to take it. And it's been up there, and it's, you know, below it, there's all kinds of comments and stuff like that. And uh, people are still, you know, interesting. And what I what it is, is I'm a Canadian asking for the right to carry a firearm for self-defense, with training, of course, and, and a background check. Uh, and obviously, proficiency, proficiency, knowing what you're doing, training. And uh, can't speak today. i got to trim this thing. It's just like tripping my tongue, you know what I mean? Uh, looks like a walrus. You know. But anyway, um, so I get comments from time to time of people that I once felt like, uh, you know, and, and would have agreed with them wholeheartedly, and then now it's like, well, I don't see it that way anymore. And, you know, people can change their opinions. It doesn't make them hypocrites if they get different information and change their opinions. Years ago, I would not have ever agreed with the right to carry until I started looking into it, and then I'm like, uh, makes a great idea. So uh, one of the arguments um, a user posted was that, you know, uh, and it usually comes down to what I call the brainwashing answer, where you're Canadian, you're not an American, we don't need those here, uh, kind of answers. And you've seen it with Dalton McGinty with our firearms culture is different than that of the States. It is different in a lot of ways. Yes, Americans do buy firearms for self-defense quite regularly. Canadians typically don't. Why? Because, well, we don't 
we don't admit that if we do or, or we don't because it's not legal to have a firearm really for self-defense. Yes, okay, yes, you can under extreme circumstance, circumstances, 